Okay. So, uh, I'm Devin. I'm uh, the inventor of Open Index Protocol. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of things about uh, our latest um, application for kind of playing around with the index, uh, DDX, um, which was a project, a joint project with um, uh, Caltech to expand upon ETDB. Uh, it stands for uh, a distributed database of X, basically of anything. So it's something that you can use to uh, experiment around a new type of records, um, a, a new uh, application entirely, um, or you can just kind of experiment with the records that are in there and then build your own thing from scratch. So let's get started. Uh, first thing, I've already started DDX. I'm going to assume that you can follow the basic instructions in um, uh, GitHub to get that started, and so I've got that launched right here at localhost 3000. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do in order to be able to publish anything, I need to have my own uh, flow wallet with my own keys, and it's got to have a little, little bit of a balance in it, so I'm going to actually use the built-in wallet module here to create one. Uh, now I click on new wallet, and it generates a, a mnemonic for me. I'm hiding that from you, but... <clears throat> You will uh, get to see uh, your own when you do that. So I'm going to go ahead and load that, and that will find me my first flow address. Uh, this is important because I'm going to use it in some records, and I'm also going to quickly send it <coughs> some flow right now from another wallet. So that we've got what we've got flow um, to do some publishing with. So that's set. So um, I'm going to need to derive a couple of other types of uh, keys. Um, and so first thing I'm going to show you is how to do that. Um, because in order for me to start publishing things, I need to have a private key. I need to have my um, uh, my my XPub, etc. So uh, before we get started with that. Let's go over here, and I'm going to use an application called uh, OIP HDMW uh, Helper, or just uh, HDMW Helper, and I'll, I'll, I'll link to this. Um, and this was just a, a simple yarn install and a yarn start, um, and let me quickly just see what the commands that it has are. So I want to load the memnonic um, that I was just given in my wallet there, so I'll LM, I copied it for myself. You're going to be doing the same thing here. Okay, I've got that loaded. It's initialized. And uh, first thing I want is my XPub. Okay, that gives me my XPub. I'm going to go ahead and copy that to my notes for myself. Um, you'll know that it's working properly because it starts with FPUB, because it's Florin Coins, or rather Flows, uh, XPub. Sorry, Joy. And now I'm going to go ahead and get my private key. <coughs> uh, for flow, zero, zero, zero. That's account, chain, and address. Okay, and that's the private key that I am going to use to sign records with. Um, so that you know that you're getting the right private key for the right uh, chain, uh, it should start with an R, a capital R. That's the main net uh, flow private keys. Okay. So, I've got all those, and I'm going to go ahead and use that information <coughs> to publish myself, or to create myself a publisher record. That's the first thing I need to do in order to, to create other records within the system. So I'll go look at the template. I'll switch over, switch the, the browser here to templates, and I'll look at the templates. These are record templates that already exist, okay? Um, there are a few that are just kind of people playing around with stuff. That are, there are a few that we've built functionality into. Um, there's a few that were kind of uh, misfires and we, we don't yet have um, edit built into the, the current version of the daemon. So soon enough, we'll be able to hide away the mistakes and stuff like that. But for the time being, there's a few duplicate ones for registered publishers. So I already know the actual template that I want to use. I want to make sure that I use this one. And you should too. Uh, TMPL underscore 433C2 seven, eight, three. So uh, there's three different buttons that I can use. This is if I want to extend this template. This is if I want to use this template along with some other ones, uh, which we'll do in a little bit. For the time being, I just want to create a single record using this template, and I'll do that just by clicking here. Okay, 
So that brings up uh, the, the fields for this particular template. Um, and I will show in another video how to create record templates. Um, so for now, you want to do this just to use the ones that already exist. And once you become familiar with it, then you can start defining your own record templates. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, my name is demo user. Okay, I've already got my uh, flow xpub, so let me grab that, paste it in. And I've got my private key, let me grab that and paste it in. Now, you're not going to get any um, explicit feedback from the interface because it would require asynchronously looking at stuff and all this stuff. So um, I'm going to just pull up the uh, console and click this, and we'll go ahead and just watch and see when we get a um, success. Here we go, success. So I'm going to grab that because that's actually the transaction ID of the record that was just created, and I'm going to need that in a second. So copy that, put this one elsewhere. Okay, so um, while we wait for that to load, uh, it's just be a few moments here while, while it uh, waits for a, a block to show up. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to basically uh, connect that publisher address that I just created to an external, basically a social media account um, that I can use in order to uh, validate that the social media account that I've got outside of Open Index Protocol is controlled by the same person who has the keys that's, that's publishing content using these keys. Um, therefore, if someone has some really large social media following, they can create this loop between that and this brand new OIP account and kind of borrow all of the kind of trust and authority that they've built up when that, with that social media account. Um, now, right now, we're only going to be using uh, Twitter for this, um, but we've actually, uh, in, the, in the demo, it can also find, um, uh, let's see if I have any in here, uh, find them in Gab. Uh, if you want to use that, but really this is just for demonstration purposes, I guess they're not. Um, this is really just for demonstration purposes. It's really to demonstrate that you could use it on any social media network. It could be Facebook or LinkedIn, whatever. Um, <clears throat> let's check and see if we've got a new block yet. Of course, because I'm making a demo, we probably have a long block. That's that's you know the thing you're going to come to learn as a as a developer. I'm joking, of course, but it tends to feel that way. That as you're playing around with the flow blockchain, which by the way has an a, a, um, a default uh, average block time or a, or a target uh, block time of 40 seconds, uh, and it's actually held to that quite well over the over the time. But whenever you send a transaction and you're waiting for it to show up, is when we get those five, six, seven minute blocks, and then we'll get a bunch real quick. So. Let's just wait for that to show up. Actually, we could just go ahead and um, create the verified publisher in the meanwhile, because I have my TX ID. So basically the way that it works is, let me open one of them, is you send a tweet that makes a claim that basically just says, hey, I'm verifying myself as this particular user, and it then connects that to uh, the TX ID of um, the, the publisher registration. Okay, so we can do that right here. So I've got a, a Twitter account right here. I'm gonna just go ahead and say at open index proto <clears throat> verifying, oops, spelling demo user is publishing as semicolon. I've got the TX ID. Let me grab that. <clears throat> and then we tweet that. And I want to go ahead and grab Okay, great. I just want my first tweet. Thanks. Okay. I want the, the Twitter ID of that because I'm going to use that in a, a second message. So since we're waiting a little bit long for blocks, we can go ahead and do them both at the same time. Um, we need... 
So this is, no, I need a verified publisher. So hold on, let's check for verified. What's the, okay, we want this template begins with F47. Okay, this is the verified publisher. And the TX ID of it first. Then we need the Twitter ID. It's this one, 11502. Don't have a Gab ID on it, right? Private key and JavaScript console again. Create and publish. Success. Okay, I don't need to keep that one. So, all right. Looks like we've got a block. We've at least got that first one. So let's go back to records and reload. Okay, so we've got a registered publisher, demo user, okay, and it's got its fpub put in there. <clears throat> and it looks like I just got another block. So let's see if we've got our verified publisher attached. There it is, great. So now what this means is every single record that I um, that is signed by the private keys that correlate to this particular public key will be um, marked with this um, uh, uh, Twitter logo. And if I click that, then it'll take me to this particular tweet, thereby showing me the connection between a person that controls demo OIP or, or uh, demo user in uh, Twitter is the same as the person that controls these particular keys. So that's actually really, really valuable. You can do a lot of things with that. Like, for example, um, we can build into the application a simple switch to be able to just hide everything that isn't verified or show absolutely everything, right? So we've got a bunch of different things in here that were created just by a, a, a test publisher that wasn't verified, and I can hide them all by just switching this. And this is just an example of the level of filtering. You can build really significant filtering, but this is something that just kind of says, hey, filter by the users that are publishing and by uh, what we can gain from their keys themselves. It's very, very powerful, something that the web simply can't do as it is right now. Um, so next, what we want to do is go ahead and publish a video. Okay, so let's do that. That'll be fun. So let's go back to our templates. And now a video is actually going to be a composite record that's made up of three sub record templates, okay? The first one is called basic, and it comes with fields that would describe um, kind of the, the the overall record that you're creating, the name, the, the uh, description, the, the year that it was originally published, stuff like that. Um, then we're gonna do one called basic video, and that includes fields um, to link to a video and its thumbnail, to find those things within a distribution network itself. Um, and the last one is payments, and that's gonna include fields um, like the index number of my fpub, which if you know what I'm talking about, great. If not, that's okay. You can, you'll get there. Um, and uh, what kind of splits I want to um, enable for uh, platforms and influencers and, and, and others. So, got these written down for myself. We want to go ahead and use uh, 66089 is basic. So we want to pick these in order. It just makes it a little bit easier because it will assemble the, the um, uh, the fields uh, that I'm going to fill out based on that. So start with that one and then uh, basic video is right beneath it and then payments is right here. 8OE. Okay. So I select all of those and then I click publish record. Let me get rid of this first. And I click publish record and it puts all those fields together for me and I can submit them as a single um, 
combined record. So <clears throat> I had to do some copy and paste in here to make this go a little bit faster. We're going to go ahead and put up uh, this video right here. All right. Oh. And this thumbnail right here. So fill out a couple of fields. This was originally published in 2016. I don't have the exact date, but I can add that later. So next I need the address within the distributed network that it's actually published to. So first I'm going to go ahead and tell it this is an IPFS. Um, OIP actually started before IPFS was born, so of course BitTorrent, there's BitTorrents uh, for, for some of the very earliest records. Um, we don't have support built into the current client to look things up with that. It just shows you that you can kind of switch back to it and start building in that 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 uh, extended kind of legacy support if you need. Um, so let's quickly start our IPFS daemon. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> going to IPFS add dash R for recursive this whole folder. Okay, this OIP Alice and Bob folder because I want both the video and the thumbnail. <clears throat> and I want them to be in the same folder. Okay, come on. And it recursively adds them. It gives me the thumbnail and the video and the address of the folder itself. Okay, so if I were to look at this, within the IPFS network, I could see that I've got the address or the, the um, IPFS address um, of a directory that gives me access to these two particular uh, uh, files within it thumbnail and video, right? Good. The open index protocol is... <clears throat> so, I need this address next. Put that in here. And then video dot... Is it MP4? Yeah. MP4 and... Uh, display name isn't, in, isn't used right now, so... Thumb mail.jpg. I'm just going to do these two fields. It's in the IPFS network. Scale isn't being used right now. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put in the platform cut as 20% and the influencer cut as 10%. Skip the rest of these uh, payment fields because I don't really, they're, they're not being uh, used at the moment. And sign this with my private key. Send. And if I'm watching the blockchain, which I am, I can see that it was successful because the mempool already saw it, so I don't have to watch the console. Okay, so let's go back to records and wait for that to show up. There it is. Okay, so the record is showing up, but not seeing the thumbnail yet. I would bet that if I were to try to load it, it actually wouldn't work yet. Now this is because um, this is a peer-to-peer -peer network and it is yet to fully propagate its way across the network and find its way onto all of the various web gateways that, that might be hosting it. Um, and so within the DDX settings, um, we've actually put in the ability um, to set uh, different gateways um, right in the config very easily. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, right now it's set for IPFS's main gateway and so really what's happening here is that IPFS's main gateway hasn't yet discovered these files on the network. But of course my local host has because I'm the one that shared it. So I could switch this directly to my local host. Now remember it's not HTTPS because local host can't be. Uh, local host semicolon 8080 slash IPFS. You got to leave that part in there. Um, and then actually before I move on, 
Yeah, I do. Good. Um, I'm going to also add in a private key here. I'm going to hide this from you, though. Um, now, this is actually the private key that is being used by um, the built-in wallet that is used for tipping and stuff like that. That isn't the module that you that I used to load it. That's just a module that I used to generate keys and send transactions and look at uh, transaction histories. It isn't tied into the app, uh, into the tipping functionality of the app. This is where you, you, you put in your private key um, uh, to be able to send tips. Now, I'm not using the same private key as the one I was using um, because I want to be able to separate who is sending the tip from who is receiving the tip, and it would cause confusion if I use the exact same ones. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, use one that I've already loaded a dollar onto. And let's, once now that we've got both of those things in there, let me go ahead and save that and close it. And this is going to start reloading itself in a second here. Oh, there it is. So, right away, of course, we noticed that the thumbnail loaded. That's great. Um, next, this not available. There you go. Next, that loads. It detects its balance. It's got a buck. So, um, let's go ahead and load this record by clicking on this. Now, remember, of course, we do have that uh, uh, tweet, Twitter icon showing that this particular record is a verified uh or is, is, was published by a verified publisher. Um, it actually tells me exactly who that was, too. So, it's loaded, you can click it, so it's playing, fantastic, this is great, right? Um, and then tells me all the other records that are signed by this same user down here when it's loaded. So, next I wanna go ahead and send a tip to this address. Now, this is hard-coded with, a, with a, um, an amount with basically, it's going to look up what the um, per coin price and send two cents, two U.S. cents uh, worth to the publisher who, who created this video. Um, that's hard coded in, but of course you can set it to anything you want, or of course you could if you wanted um, make it a paywall where you can't see the content unless a payment has been sent. But for now, let's just go ahead and see it using this. So I click that, um, and this will actually go down to to 101 in a second there. There it is. And if I click this, I can see in the um, Block Explorer the transaction itself. Okay, So this is just, this first part you can just ignore. This is me sending back my own change. It's kind of like if you went to the store with a $20 bill to buy something that cost two cents. Two things on the receipt are $20 and 1998. So you can ignore these two. This one was the two cent tip that went straight to the, um, the publisher. Right? And actually, if you remember, that is the, the address. Oh, well, it's on screen. There it is. FCT. So this is the address, that the public key that I've been using since I created this demo user and you watched me do it. Coolness. Um, okay, and so we're going to do one more thing. I should have... No, that's okay. So, okay. So next what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to create a a platform. I'm going to register a platform. This is important because if you want to run an application in OIP and you want to be able to earn that cut, that say right here, that 20% platform cut or whatever the cut happens to be for a piece of content, you have to register your platform. So um, I've already got some info set up for myself to do so. Now I'm doing it with another wallet, of course, because again, um, I want to be able to show the actual splits, how everything splits apart, so it would be pointless if I used the exact same um, keys as what I've been using for the publisher or, or, or now uh, to send tips from. So this is a... I need to first... That's not a platform. Wacky, wacky. <coughs> Registered platform. Okay, so this is the template we want to use for registering a platform. So let's go ahead and just switch back to our templates. Find that one. So F6 starts with F6A. <coughs> and demo platform. 
Um, this isn't in use right now. Um, this is, I'm actually not going to be using this on a web-based platform. I'm just going to be running this on localhost. Um, but when it is um, put in, basically what it'll do is it'll check that the actual platform that's being used is at this actual URL. So it's kind of a way to self-validate. Um, but for now, you can just leave it alone. Um, this is a demo platform. Okay, flow F hub. Put that in. Flow payment address. So I'm hiding that one. But the payment address, you can see, it starts with FQN. Let me go ahead and skip the Bitcoin payment address for now because I don't have one handy. Just went, yeah, good. So now we go ahead and close that. <clears throat> oh, I need my TX ID. So grab my TX ID because this is key. So I need to go back to my, so this is the TX ID of the registered platform that I just created. I want to go ahead and go back to my config uh, for this particular node that I'm running at, at um, localhost 3000, and I want to tell it. The platform registration TX ID is right there. That's the one that I just registered. And so what it's going to do is the application itself will look for that TX ID within the index. Once it finds it, it asks it, hey, what payment address is, is, is being used for this? That way, <clears throat> when it comes across um, a record with uh, a platform split, it can know where to send that platform split to. So let's just wait for that platform registration uh, record to get validated. Again, of course, we have a long block. This is a five-minute block. That means it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit real soon. So we call that uh, Murphy's block phenomenon when you're <clears throat> waiting on your average 40-second blocks and you're doing something and you're testing something or you're sending a transaction that you need to see the results of. Every once in a while, it just kind of makes you makes you really, really, really uh, want it. That was a, a twenty minute block there. So hit reload, and we shall see our new platform registration. Awesome, but it's not just about seeing it; it's more about what it does. So. Let me go back into this, and we're going to send a tip uh, to this particular video again. <clears throat> if you remember, just remind you real quick, this was the tip that we had previously sent. We can reload. It definitely has been confirmed by now. Um, where we sent two cents. Uh, this is the two cents in flow, and then the rest went back to myself, right? So let's do it now. And we click see payment here. And if nothing went wrong, yay. What actually happens is that it split it. This went to the publisher. You actually remember that FCT. Right? And then this is the platform. This is actually the platform ad address. Um, well, I'm not going to go back to the records. Well, yeah, let's, let's, let's go ahead and look. Um, that is the mechanism by which the application layer has the ability, oh, there it was, um, to earn a, a, a chunk of the value that's flowing through the system by doing the subjective work of suggesting the kind of content that someone would enjoy, right? That's freaking awesome. So the last thing I want to show you really quick is creating your own uh, record templates. So there's two different ways to do so. One is you can take a um, record template that already exists and extend it. Like if I wanted basic video and I wanted to just extend that, I could click this and I could add more fields. But instead, I want to just go ahead and show you um, a new record template straight from scratch. So you'd use this to create an entirely new use case or whatever the heck else. So the friendly name is just a descriptive name. It's so that you can remember it and others can, can remember it. Um, and then the template description, also just friendly information that makes it kind of easier to find. I'm not actually going to do one. I'm just going to kind of show you how it works. And then you start 
um, creating fields and setting what, what their types are, right? So either it's a single or repeated. If it's repeated, it's going to be something um, inside of an array. So it's creating multiple um, objects in an array. Um, and then these are the different types of uh, fields that it can be. So, for example, if it's enum, it's going to be uh, a list. So it could be red, blue, green, right? And we're, we're saying kind of favorite colors. Um, <clears throat> it can be um, a OIP ref. This is, we'll, we'll show off how, how cool this can be kind of later as we kind of build it out. But it's basically how you can connect one record to another. You can create references between one record and another with these OIP ref fields. And so the, the type of information or the type of data that it's expecting here is actually the TX ID or the, or the record ID of an OIP record. Um, uh, float double obviously recognize all the rest of this stuff so and then you just put in your private key and what it does is it now generates a new record template right and once it has that new record template then other people um, can use that record template you or other people can use that record template just by switching over to the templates and picking one um, for example the other day um, Joey asked to archive some archive a tweet and that was the very first thing that we were doing with Alexandria but I wanted to kind of rebuild that functionality uh, really quickly with this um, and these are the, the, the fields that I added. What's the URL? What's the text? Uh, give me an IPFS address of a screenshot of it, uh, and then, of course, signing it. So just as a quick review, I'm going to summarize some of the uh, most uh, important uh, details that I went over. Um, this is the uh, GitHub repo for where we actually get DDX Lite, the application we've been using this whole time. First step, really, was to uh, generate um, a new wallet using the built-in HDMW wall, uh, module. Uh, store that 12-word mnemonic that it gives you. That is basically uh, your uh, password for all intents and purposes. Um, and then also, of course, grab a uh, public key that you can uh, <clears throat> receive some flow tokens um, at. Uh, if you already have some in another wallet, great, you've got that taken care of. Um, some options for where you can get some. Are if you want to uh, exchange with uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, Bitrex is the most popular one that carries flow. Um, and if you just need a few for publishing and you're just experimenting, come join us at our chat um, and you can ask for me there at Devon. Um, or really anyone in the beta channels would, would, would be willing to, to, to spare a few uh, for development purposes. Um, this is the uh, HDMW CLI. Uh, that I was using to uh, retrieve uh, my XPUB and private keys uh, so that I could use that in some uh, records later on. Um, when uh, we went to go ahead and uh, create a registered publisher, this is the template you're going to use for that. For a verified publisher, this is the template you're going to use for that kind of a record. When you're ready to do a, uh, an actual video record with uh, description, video fields, and uh, payment information, these are the templates that you're going to want to use. And when you want to uh, publish a record to register your platform, this is the template you want to use. So thank you so much for watching. And again, come join us at chat.alexandria.io if you have uh, any questions? Uh, there's uh, plenty of um, third-party developers or uh, developers of third-party applications 